Happy Jesus Pride Month. Today's presentation, I will be providing information on the biggest push in the LGBTQ movement, which is transitioning our young children from their born sex to the opposite sex using gender affirming therapy, puberty blockers, and sex reassignment surgery. This transition can start as young as ages three and four. Now I would like to define for you gender affirming therapy. Gender affirming therapy is the therapist a providing approval for the decision that the child would like to make to change their sex. You affirm it, you approve it. Laura Duncan wrote an article that was penned this month in which she talked about Stanford professor, Dr. Jack Tubin. He conducted a survey in 2019, and in that survey, he found that it is best for therapists to provide approval to any child who would like to change their sex. He said that if you don't, the child will commit suicide or suffer some self-inflicted harm. Now let's, let's, let's look at the funding for his study. The study was funded by pharmaceuticals giants Pfizer and Arbor. Pfizer and Arbor make puberty blocker drugs. Dr. Turbin also received funding from the ACLU for his study. Now, many researchers have come out and attacked his study because it is dramatically flawed from the bias questions to the data sampling. So it's definitely under attack. Now, why is this important? Because as soon as the study was published, it was picked up by all of the media outlets all of the cable news programs and also those internet uh, programs that we like to enjoy. And From his research, over 100 transitioning clinics were open. Parents were told, parents were told that if they do not start their children on puberty blockers who wish to transition, that that child may likely die. So it was a frightening story that they put out there. Jamie Reed, a worker at a clinic, one such clinic, which is Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri, she became a whistleblower in this clinic. Now, Jamie Reed is a liberal, she's a lesbian, and she's married to a trans. But she said to herself, I cannot stand by idly and allow children to come in in groves and be put on puberty blockers. So in the past, you would only see a few boys that would come into the clinic. But since 2019, there has been an explosion of young teenage girls coming into the clinic demanding treatment. She said that 70% of the clients are teenage girls, and sometimes they are arriving from the same school, clusters from the same school. Now on a side note, Dr. Samuel Versay explains this sudden explosion of girls. He calls it social contagion. Social contagion is when someone sees a certain behavior and they decide to mimic it or imitate it because that person is celebrated. They're acknowledged. So Jamie Reed said that the young girls were coming into the clinic. They had com comorbidities such as depression, anxiety, autism, eating disorders, but the physicians did not care. They just moved forward with the transitioning process. So here's the first step. The, the child that came in with her family has to receive a letter from a therapist. Well, this clinic would tell them what therapist to go to, and it's a gender-affirming therapist. This clinic would also ap provide approval letters for that clinic. So when the, when the young lady would go there, she would receive approval. She would see the therapist maybe once, I mean, maybe uh, once or twice, but not multiple visits. So the therapist does not get a chance to know that young person. You know, perhaps there's something going on in a family, a divorce, a rape, or molestation. It doesn't matter. They were moved forward in the process. Step number two, the child is given testosterone. Now think of that. A young girl, 10, 11, 12, 13, or teenager being given testosterone. 
And here are the profound and permanent effects that Jamie Reed cited. She said the young girl will begin to have a deep voice in just a few months. A beard would sprout. Sexual interest would explode. Aggression would explode. Infertility and the thinning of the vaginal walls, which is important because as the young lady gets older, perhaps she wants to change back. But these, uh, because of this thinning, there would be rips and uh, rupture. Protrusion of the female genitalia that causes pain and chafing. Brittle bones, brittle teeth, joint problems, seizures, migraines, and suicidal thoughts. Now boys are given prostate cancer fighting drugs to change. They do not have prostate cancer. They're using this drug off label, which means there have been no tests to find out what's gonna happen when a young boy takes a drug and he doesn't even have cancer. But here's what we do know. He will start to exhibit fatty tissue in the breast area. He will have flu-like symptoms the entire time that he's on the drugs. So hot flashes, cold flashes, nausea, exhaustion, um, fevers. He will have blood in the urine, stunted growth in his genitals. So if he starts taking it at 12 and he's 30 years, 30 years later, he will still have the genitals of a 12-year-old. Liver toxicity. Parents who sign their children up for a lifetime, sign their children up for these therapies will experience, their children will experience a lifetime of blood pressure problems, cholesterol problems, and diabetes problems. Now, in speaking with a, a medical professional, I found out that the transitioning sur surgery costs upwards of $40,000. So imagine a pediatric sur surgeon who is used to doing uh, surgery on sports injuries and broken arms and those kinds of things. Now, all of a sudden, he has these kinds of surgeries. So as you can see, money is involved throughout this entire process. So Pam Reed also noted that she saw children coming in from the psychiatric ward of the hospital who had schizophrenia, uh, bipolar, major mental health illnesses. And they were sent to a psychologist who always approved these kinds of surgeries or treatments. She called it medical castration. So it would be the end of the line for that particular child. Now, as I close, one statement that she mentioned that she would hear in her staff meetings was this. The doctors would say, We are building this plane as we fly it. Medical care for our children, they said, we are building this plane as we fly it. They were acknowledging that they, that they did not know what was going to happen, but they were moving fast in dangerous territory. Now we know for sure as believers what works, and that is the word of God and trusting in Christ Jesus. Amen.